You know, a farm wagon when it was on the farmer ranch was the comparative to the ton and a half grain truck that we see more common today. In the older days, of course, were much bigger than that today in the semis. But back in the day, they were commonly used to haul grain. Well, through the center of these boxes, there were a couple of frames that stood out past the side of the box, and then there was a slat on each side. Well, these slats were often used as steps to stand on while you were shoveling out the grain. When these farm wagons were taken and converted to either chuck wagons or the sheep wagons, these steps became a place that you could place a water barrel, or in the case of the sheep wagon, where you could put a couple boxes to hold some extra accessories. Well, down the outside edge of these side benches, there's a vertical board, kind of a backstop. 
that the bows will come in and fasten to. And in this corner from the old remnants, it seems like there was a boxed off area, perhaps a pan holder. And right in this corner here is where the cook stove would have gone. And as a heat shield behind that cook stove was this metal sheet. that would have said about like so. Well, still fastened to this tin are some boards here that formed the box that I suspect was probably the pots and pan holder. Well, these sideboards here are just right at seven inches. So that should be a good indication of what the sideboards here should be. Also should be seven inches to match these boards, I'm guessing. Well, this board that is still attached to the tin, I'm going to try to save that. This board across the bench here is pretty bad, so I'm going to probably have to replace it. Well, I do have a board here that is just over 14, about 14 and a quarter. So that'll allow me two 7-inch boards and allow for a saw kerf. And the end of this board has a drying crack, which normally I would kick this board out. But since we're looking for old wood that has the signs of age, I'm actually going to leave that in here. And because of the style of my saw, the layout of my shop, when I get into these long boards, this one is 12 foot, I have to put roller stands on both sides of my table. So I generally just kind of do a dry run, catch that roller on that back end and just see how it's going to travel, if it's going to walk away from my fence on one side or the other. That side I've got pretty close. And I run it the other direction as well, try to catch that roller. And you see I'm starting to walk away from my fence here, so I need to adjust that roller. It's pulling this way, so I need to straighten out my roller. About like so. I'll try it again. Still walking just a little bit. That's much better.
So the frame of the front wall is going to set in here somewhere until I get that figured out. I'm not going to fasten this permanently in place. I'll get that front wall and then I'll know exactly where this sets. This little tin shield will fasten on to this new piece here. It gives about three quarters of an inch airspace between the shield and the wood side. And then of course this heavy tin will go over top of all of that. It does have some ripples and some dents. I may try to work some of that out. There also should be some type of a board, I'm guessing, that goes across here. You can see where there was a cleat. We'll get that picture once we get the front wall in place. There's also a nail here that gives an indication that there was some type of a board fastened here as well. But this whole section here should allow a place to put your pots and pans as this wagon was traveling from camp to camp, kind of keep them contained. You know, most of these shepherds, I think for the most part, were bachelors. This is not really a family dwelling operation. Anyway, one step closer, I've got the kitchen to do next. I've got enough there that I think I can save that as well. I'm going to try to tackle that next week. Appreciate you coming along. Thanks for watching.